piece I'm drawing today is part two of a piece I actually drew on stream. I've been trying to incorporate characters more into my pieces, and so I wanted to take this color scheme and these characters I came up with and incorporate them into a new and different place. But now I'm just trying to separate the foreground and background and figure out what the different pieces of the composition are. So the other scene is a night scene, and this one is more in the daytime, so I'm still trying to figure out how the colors interact with one another. Just kind of adding some details in the foreground to make it not look so flat. vision for this piece was sort of our character walking through the desert towards a city uh, far in the distance. Since these will be so far away, I didn't bother incorporating too many details, but just getting enough that through the sandstorm you can get a sort of idea. To get this sandstorm kind of look, we take just a solid shape and apply a Gaussian blur to it. And then to give the desert a little bit more texture, we give it a gradient and then start painting on some individual lines to make it feel like it's not a flat surface. Now that we have our environment in place, I want to start adding objects to it to make it feel sort of realistic. So I imagine this kind of otherworldly tree that is kind of bent over but still alive. I struggled a lot here to figure out the right colors to use. Because the previous scene, like I said, was a night scene and this one's a day scene, so I didn't fully quite understand yet as I was working in the composition and these color constraints how to make it make sense in this world. So I play a lot with the shadows and highlights to try to figure out the thing that matches. I probably iterated on this more than I should have, but this is an important part for figuring out how the composition fits together. like a small rock nearby helps reinforce the idea that light is coming from a certain direction so it helps us just sell the illusion we're trying to create. As I start to figure out the colors and which direction light is coming from, it starts to really come together in a clear way. And it's just about adding highlights to make the final image really come together. Now 
now that I have this knowledge about where light's coming from, I start applying those rules to other things that I've already drawn so that it looks more clear. I don't really know how to draw a horse very well, so I always go to Unsplash to get royalty-free images to use as references, especially when I'm working with natural things or anatomy where I'm just not as comfortable. So I have this image of a horse here that I'm sort of referencing. I'm not really tracing it, I'm just trying to get the idea of how proportions and legs of animals move. And for me, when I'm working with vectors, it's more about just getting the initial points down, because after that, it's more about sculpting the shape into the way that you want it. Like this leg is way too small, but I get it together. The same problem I had with the tree and figuring out the colors, I had the same issue with the horse. Right now, they're the same color, which is a little bit weird because one is made of wood and one is a horse. So that doesn't really work. So it took me a while to figure that out. I started adding in the shadow. Now that I understand where light's coming from, it was more about just taking the shape and then casting a shadow. It still was kind of tricky to make all the lines line up correctly and make it look realistic. And I don't even know if this is technically correct, but eh, it looks good. The same technique we used with the tree to add shadows and highlight to sell the illusion, we're going to do the exact same thing here, where things that will get less light or more light will just add a layer of detail around it to make it look more correct. I'm starting to fiddle with the colors and figure out uh, which one actually works and I go through a bunch of different iterations because I know it's not supposed to look like wood and after jumping around between all the possible permutations I eventually find this one that makes a lot of sense. This horse hair you wouldn't really even see from the final composition but it's just a little bit of like cross hatching almost to give it some shading. Now I'm starting on the character, the hooded character. This is a really cool character that I just drew in the last piece and I just loved the way the cape flowed in the wind and I, I wanted to use this again. And so uh, I'm drawing out this character and trying to figure out well, what do they look like now when they walk. some details to the character like a belt and, and the shadows and highlights on on their clothes and making them a little bit taller they were a little short before and I'm doing the same thing with the shadow casting it out I decided that the character was kind of missing an element on their person, so I gave I gave the character a sword. Well, might have to retcon and go back and add it in the first piece. Here I added a bunch of footsteps, and I realized I put in way too many, and so I ended up deleting a bunch and then uh, scaling them up a little bit. I'm not sure if this is what horse footprints look like, but I tried my best. I just fade those out the further they get away. Adding a few more rocks 
just to once again sell the perspective that we're proposing. Lastly, I wanted this sandstorm to feel like it's a part of like a bigger storm that's on the horizon. So I created some small clouds and then just kind of painted the horizon with them. Well, this is the final piece. I really had a lot of fun working on this. This is a series that I'm doing right now with this character and their horse, and I hope you enjoyed it. If you want to come by some time and check out the work that I do, I stream every week at twitch.tv slash number one gun. Come check me out sometime. Until next time, peace.